This is Mac Media Cast 8, a screencast episode. Hey everybody, it's been a long time since I've done a podcast because of a large project I've been working on, a cooking show for television. I figured I'm way overdue, so why not show you what I've been working on and a couple of tips and tricks and workflows in Final Cut Pro. Tip number one, dealing with HDV. Now, I read a lot of complaints about the HDV format on forums like the Creative Cow forums. HDV capture is problematic, HDV format is highly compressed, doesn't have the color space of other HD formats, and it takes a long time to render. Now, I'm mostly interested in render time and quality for this TV show, so I've got HDV footage captured as Apple Intermediate Codec 720p. Now, because of the new ProRes 422 codec and cross-format timelines in Final Cut Studio 2, I just set up my timeline as ProRes 422. I render at a higher quality, which is better for my graphics and gives me more space to color correct. I'm open to other suggestions for dealing with HDV. If you have them, send them to macmediacast at gmail.com. I'll share them with everyone. Tip number two, keep Final Cut Pro organized. I'm working on 13 episodes of 30-minute programs with location footage and kitchen footage, graphics, voiceovers. I recommend to stay organized. I have Google Docs as scripts, which are shared with all the producers and editors, and then all of my clips and assets are arranged very carefully by scene in all of the bins that you see here. Tip number three, color for television. Most television networks, especially at a national level, are very concerned with footage being television safe. All the colors and all the blacks and whites all need to be within spec. Check out our tutorials on the video scopes at macmediacast.com for more detail. But here's how I do this. I always keep an eye on the color in the vector scope, making sure that no one color exceeds its target. This is out of spec. I also keep my eye on the waveform monitor and the histogram to make sure that my whites don't go above 100. That's out of spec for television. Every clip on my timeline has a three-way color corrector on it. Even if I'm not correcting color, I keep my whites in check this way. For safety on problematic or super bright scenes, I use the Failsafe Final Cut Pro Broadcast Safe filter. These are all good practices even if you're not going to national television. You want your videos to look good on every TV, right? Tip number four, multicam editing is very cool. Now because this is a cooking show, we have two cameras in the kitchen, two matched JVC GYHD 200 cams, and they are time code locked via a cable between them. Final Cut Pro allows multi-camera editing. This saves so much time, it's like having a virtual switcher. Now I'll do a more in-depth tutorial on this later. I just lock the two clips together as a multi-clip using that lock time code. Then I can see real time what's going on with both. Then with key commands, I can switch between the two on the timeline. Very cool. I usually make one pass as a rough cut and then go back and fine cut. I find it effective to really think about my multicam cuts like I would any other edit. I cut back to the chef when he's looking at the camera or saying something important. I catch the best shots on the close-up camera. I even go as far as cutting to the beat of the music sometimes. It's subliminal, but very effective. So there's a few easy Final Cut Pro tips, and I just also wanted to show you what project that's been keeping me too busy to podcast lately. More soon. Now keep dropping by the website macmediacast.com and keep those emails coming, macmediacast at gmail.com. I'll talk to you all soon.